Okay, so you all just experienced the dynamic performance of this Type R on the, on the track today. So I'm going to take you through a little bit more detail on some of the technologies that went into the car to help deliver that experience to you. So first of all, the team really sought to break new ground with the new Civic Type R, both in terms of its circuit performance and its on-road grand touring performance. Type R did break new ground in the Nürburgring earlier this year, it was in, in April, with a time of 7 minute 43.8 seconds, so bested the previous Type R by almost 7 seconds, and also in the process clubbed the uh, Volkswagen GTI is it Club Sport S by, by about 3 seconds as well. So the heart of the Type R is a four-cylinder, two-liter turbo engine. Uh, our rating for the U.S. market is 306 horsepower, 295 uh, pound-feet of torque. That's delivered on uh, 91 Ron pump fuel in the U.S. In terms of uh, specific output, that's 153 horsepower per liter. And the technologies that contribute to that high specific output are shown here. So we have what we call IB tech in the Honda world. It includes dual variable cam timing, both on intake and exhaust camshafts, as well as uh, VTEC, which is variable lift control uh, on the exhaust side. In addition, we have a low inertia turbo with an electric wastegate for very rapid response on the turbo. There's a cylinder cooling system, which gives us better combustion efficiency, as well as a water cool exhaust manifold. And that combined with a super lightweight crank train makes the engine extremely responsive. In addition, we can we continue that uh, uh, lightweight into the transmission in terms of lightweight single mass flywheel. We've got a helical limited slip differential to help put traction down, and there's a water cooled intercooler for the or water cooled transmission oil cooler to help keep the transmission cool. The gear ratios on the transmission are close ratio, and the final drive ratio is lower than the than the standard car, lower than the previous car to help aid. Uh, improve overall acceleration of the car. In addition, we've got the rev match system, which is to help smooth out the shifts. So when you combine all these technologies together, all the lower inertia parts, the, the idea is to make the car very responsive in order, and the drive-by-wire throttle is helped programmed in with all this lower inertia components that basically may give you very um, rapid response so you don't have uh, delay on throttle tip-in and you don't have overshoot on throttle tip-out. So this is an overview of the rev match system. So we have a rev match system. You, uh, hopefully you experienced it out on the track. Uh, whether you had it on, you can also turn off. You can drive it both ways. Uh, if you had it on and that was a new driving style for you, if you're used to heel toe, it's kind of a little bit of an adaptation. But for a lot of drivers, it's actually going to improve their driving experience. And the blipping of the throttle actually sounds pretty cool too. Okay, so overall, uh, Proportions for the new Civic Type R are based on the 10th generation Civic platform. So we've told you a lot before as we're rolling out 10th generation Civic that it's low and wide proportions and help the dynamics of the car. And Type R benefits from that as well. We've lowered the center of gravity of the car compared to the previous generation Type R. It's on a longer wheelbase and a wider track. So all these things combine to help uh, deliver a better, uh, more high speed stable car, better cornering dynamics. In addition, the uh, body structure. So again, 10th uh, generation uh, Civic platform body structure. This slide gives you some comparisons um, against previous generation Type R. So uh, against the previous uh, European model, the torsional stiffness of the, the new body structure is up 38%. And even uh, since the car is based on a new 10th generation hatchback, uh, the Type R is stiffened up over the the current hatchback by plus three percent and that was achieved mainly through not structural enhancements but by putting uh, more ad adhesive uh, joints uh, compounds in the joints when they put the thing together so it gives you a very stiff uh, built structure without adding a lot of weight okay and then overall aero and this is compared to previous generation type r uh, lower uh, coefficient of lift and lower co coefficient of drag. I walked you around the car uh, yesterday and, and explained how everything is functional in the car. Uh, they even achieved more downforce out of the new wing than the previous car. And uh, overall drag has been reduced by, I believe, 5%. It'll be detailed in your press kit. In addition, thermal management, I, I showed this to you uh, yesterday as well. And here you have a, a cool little uh, multicolor thing where you can see where the cooling air is coming in and, the, and uh, spinning off the heat from the car. So uh, we've got cooling ducts uh, in the hood as well. So the new 10th generation platform was lower and wider. We had a lower hood 
and actually adding in the hood scoop helps us maintain the, uh, the cooling management in the car with, uh, while getting a lower profile on the car. Uh, and that, that uh, air intake duct, in, in, in addition to aiding in the cooling of the engine bay, uh, also helps uh, reduce lift of, on the front end of the car. The, the chassis of the Type R is really every component of the car was uh, engineered to deliver the dynamic performance that you, that you experience today on the track and again you're going to experience on the road. So I'll take you through a few details on that. Unique thing on Type R is the, uh, the dual axis front strut suspension with, and we've got an adaptive suspension on the, on the whole car. The, the cool thing about the dual axis strut suspension is it basically separates the steering axis uh, from the stroke axis for the suspension. So with all that horsepower to the front wheels, you typically get torque steer on the car. And the way the team has achieved to reduce the torque steer of the car is they've got a unique front knuckle design which basically moves the steering axis as close as possible to the center line of the front wheels so that there's not any minimized torque moment of the, uh, the front wheels rotation over the steering axis of the car. And I hope you, you experienced uh, the benefit of that on the track today. In addition, now that we've separated the steering axis from uh, from the strut axis, the, the strut axis can actually optimize to deliver the best uh, handling geometry for the car as well. And then on the rear suspension, again, everything tightened up, really stronger, higher to, to deal with the heavy uh, dynamic loads on the, on the car, experienced on the track and for this kind of driving, everything has been, been beefed up. And although we have much heavier duty components, we still have the adaptive dampen system so we can adjust um, and compensate for the car being so stiff. Uh, when you need it to be, but we can also make it compliant when you want it to be. That comes from the adaptive damping suspension. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I talked to a lot of you guys about the adaptive dampers in the SI, and the uh, Type R system is, is a little bit more sophisticated than what's in the uh, Civic SI. So it, it is still solenoid valve control, proportion valve control. It basically is continuously adaptable in, in any mode that you have it in. But the added thing uh, with the Type R system is that it actually does use stroke sensors and G sensors. And the benefits of those are that the uh, solenoid and the proportion valve can, can adapt more rapidly to suspension inputs and vehicle inputs so that it can uh, uh, adjust more quickly to the uh, conditions of the road. So in this slide basically shows you how we, how we benefited from the previous generation Type R, which has had a uh, earlier system to this new one, which has um, the sensors included in it. And the idea is that the car will re read the dynamic conditions and respond more quickly so uh, it can damp out the roll more quickly, both in compression and, and also in rebound. Then the brake system is uh, considerably updated over, over the standard type or, or the standard uh, Civic as well and again over SI. So up front we've got four piston Brembos and cross drilled rotors. Uh, rotors are 13.8 inch in diameter, so quite large for, for a car this, uh, this small and light. Uh, for thermal control, and I showed you that during the walk around as well, we've actually got dedicated cooling ducts uh, feeding cooling air to the front brake assemblies. And then the brake booster for the Type R is unique as well. It's actually uh, been the componentry in the inside has been firmed up so that you get uh, better modulation and better pedal feel. So again, similar to the uh, SI system, so uh, Type R has, uh, well, all the 10th generation, generation Civic have electric uh, power system, power steering assist, and dual pinion variety. The, uh, and the Type R also has the beefed up motor on the, uh, on the front steering to handle uh, the additional dynamic inputs, dynamic inputs from uh, the track experience, and also because we've got a much lighter, larger tire and wheel package on this car so overall you know, unsprung weight um, this larger motor supports that it is variable ratio which is an improvement over the previous generation type R although the steering ratio has been dialed back slightly from the standard hatchback to to uh, give you more uh, stability at speed although it is still a short 2.1 turns lock to lock with the mode adjustment system, which you can play with uh, on the car, the three modes in between Comfort, Sport, and Type R will adjust uh, the, the, st the power support that you get to the steering system. So basically, you can adjust the amount of uh, effort um, and feedback that you get from the steering system through the mode system. And speaking of the mode system, so again, uh, in, in SI, we had a two-mode drive system. In Type R, we have a three-mode drive system. 
and I'm pretty sure you all tried out uh, Plus R on the track and maybe Sport. Um, when you get out on the road today, you can try out Comfort, but basically adjust all these parameters on the car in terms of the, uh, the damper system, the drive-by wire system, the, uh, the traction control system, are all adjustable uh, uh, depending on the setting and the character of the car that you're, that you're looking for. And in, in the meter, this is a similar meter to, uh, to the SI in terms of the, uh, the dynamic meter display. So you've got, you can scroll through throttle and brake uh, display, turbo boost display, rev in indicator, G meter, and lap time. On the left side, you'll see where in the SI we had both uh, uh, normal and sport modes. In Type R, you'll know what mode you're in based on whether it identifies Comfort, Sport, or Plus R in the top left corner. And then the seats. So again, we had pretty uh, nice sport seats on the on the SI, uh, which you, uh, many of you have experienced in that car already. Type R takes it up still another notch. Uh, so these are dedicated seats with a unique frame, uh, which is light weighted uh, to reduce weight in the car. Overall uh, weight reduction on the vehicle is uh, five kilograms off with these uh, unique seat frames. They do have uh, unique supports underneath the bolsters to keep them in place. And they were really designed to help keep you in place both on the racetrack, but also be comfortable out on the road. So you guys all experienced that on the track. I think everybody stayed in the car, so it's good. Um, so uh, we wanted, want you guys to see how they, uh, how they feel on the road and look forward to your feedback after a nice long drive. Okay, and the exhaust system. So the unique triple outlet exhaust system is designed. The two outboard pipes are for, for flow, uh, so uh, um, high flow out of, the, out of the engine. The center pipe is a resonator to give you the, uh, the sound output from the car. And so the, the exhaust is tuned to give you a very sporty and powerful sound in the low end to the mid-range. And then on the high end, it's tuned to give you a more refined ride so you don't get this booming or buzziness um, at high speed cruise. And actually the center, t so there are no butterfly valves or any uh, servos in the exhaust system all. It's, it's all tuned um, through that center resonator. And the trick is with the, with the resonator for a high speed, it actually goes negative pressure in the high RPM. So instead of uh, um, pulling air, sending air out, it pulls it back, basically get the venturi effect through the exhaust system. So it's no longer generating, um, you know, uh, sound is, basically helping push air out through the back of the car. So very, very unique design into a very functional effect.